Hello and welcome. In this video, I will explain how you can color the area between two curves on an Excel graph. We focus on coloring the area with two different colors. If you are only interested in coloring the area between the curves with only one color, we recommend to check out our video Excel color area between two curves. On this sheet, you can see the return of a certain index over a year and the return of a portfolio that tries to replicate the index. We are interested in the difference between these curves. So we will make a graph of both curves and highlight the area between them. Furthermore, we are interested to highlight the areas where the portfolio outperforms the index in green and the other areas in red. To color the area between the curves, the idea is to make use of the stacked area chart. This chart fills the area under a curve. We name it support. And then for each additional curve, the area between this curve and the previous one is filled with a new color. To create these additional stacked area elements on the chart, we first need to add extra columns of data. If we only need one color, we start by defining the support curve, and then we define the difference between both curves in order to color the area between the curves. In our case, with two colors, we need three more columns of data. First, the support curve, then the difference between the support curve and the curve surrounding the green areas, and then the difference between the curve surrounding the green areas and the curve surrounding the red areas. In order to determine the difference between the support curve and the curve surrounding the green areas, we need to know the intersection points of both curves. This is the case since we want to highlight all areas in green, where the portfolio return curve is above the index return, and the other areas in red. We have already prepared these calculations in the Excel workbook. As you can see, the computation is quite lengthy, but not too hard to understand. To provide the reasoning for this computation, we have added an extra table to the workbook. The idea is to find the intersection between two straight lines. You see that there is an intersection between month 2 and month 3. So first we determine the formulas of the lines connecting these points. To do this, we determine the slope and intercept for both lines which can be done with the slope and intercept functions in Excel. Then to find the x value of the intersection, we have to compute the division that we derived here. Finally, to find the y value of the intersection, we fill in the x value into the equation of one of both straight lines. In the intersections table, we have used this reasoning to compute all intersections. We have done this using an if function. First, we check if there is an intersection of the curves when going from month to month. If this is the case, we compute the intersection using the reasoning just explained. Otherwise, we output zero. Now we copy paste our return data down and add the extra data columns for the areas. We also have to add all intersection points. So we paste these underneath the input data. The x values should be pasted below the numeric format of the month data, and the y values should be pasted in the index and portfolio return columns. Remark that both are the same, as these are the values of the intersection points. Before we continue the computations for the extra columns, we will sort the table on the x values. To do so, you select all data, navigate to sort and filter, and select custom sort. In the menu, you indicate you sort by column A on the cell values and from smallest to largest. You press OK and see that the data is now sorted by time. We remove the zeros from the data as these are not useful for us. Next, we add the support curve and two difference columns, difference 1 and difference 2. For the support curve, we choose one of both curves. Let's take the index return. In the difference columns, we compute respectively the differences for the green areas and the differences for the red areas. For the first month, for example, we check for difference one if the portfolio return is greater than the index return. If this is the case, we compute the difference between both returns. Otherwise, we output zero. For difference two, it is the other way around. We compute the difference if the index return is greater than the portfolio return, and zero otherwise. Remark that we do minus the index return, since this is the support curve. We drag this formula down. 
Now we have all required data for the graph we intend to create. We start by creating a graph with the two curves for the returns. To do this, we first select all data, the months that represent the x values in the graph, and the index and portfolio returns that represent the y values in the graph. Then we navigate to Insert, and in the Charts section, we select the line charts. As you can see, a graph appears on the screen with two curves, one for the index return and one for the portfolio return. The x-axis appears in the middle of our curves, since it is located at the zero y value. This makes the graph look a bit messy, so we will change this by clicking on the y-axis, navigating to the three bars icon, and choosing the axis value where the horizontal axis crosses, and type minus 20, as this is well below both curves. We give the graph a name. I'll take index versus portfolio return. And we're done with the graph appearance for this video. Now we go back to our chart, select chart design, and click on select data. A menu opens where we will add the newly defined data columns. We click on add. Select the first column of data, which is the support curve. As series name, we select cell E28. And as series values, we select range E29 till E48. We do the same for both difference columns. F28 as series name, and range F29 till F48 as series values for the first difference column. And G28 as series name, and range G29 till G48 as series values for the second difference column. We click on OK and see that the lines appear on the chart. As mentioned before, we want to make this extra data appear as stacked areas in the chart. To do this, we select Change Chart Type. In the menu, we select Combo. For both the index and portfolio returns, we choose Line as before. And for the support and difference, we choose stack area. We press OK and see the area between the curves colored in yellow and blue. We still have to remove the gray area and change the colors of the areas and curves now. To do that, you select the gray area, go to format and set the shape fill to no fill. We click on the portfolio return curve, go to format, and set the shape outline to green. We select the index return curve, go to format and set the shape outline to red. To change the areas themselves, you click on the yellow area, which should become green. We go to format and set the shape fill to green. We do the same for the blue area by selecting it, going to format and setting shape fill to red. Let's make the legend a bit clearer. We delete support from the legend since we don't need this. To do that, you double click on the legend, then double click on support, and press delete. Finally, we change the names difference 1 and difference 2 to portfolio return, greater than index return, and portfolio return, smaller than index return. To do this, we go to chart design, press on select data. Here we select difference 1, select edit, and change the series name to portfolio return greater than index return. We press OK and do the same for difference 2. We select it, then click on edit and change the series name to index return smaller than portfolio return. We press on OK, again on OK, and the chart is now how we want it to appear. A final remark that we make is that the order of the support and different series is of great importance for the graph. In our other video on this topic, we have shown this on the graph. If you are interested, you can always check out the other video. This concludes our tutorial on Excel color area between two curves with different colors. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. Be sure to subscribe if you want to watch more Excel or software related tutorials. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.